Good morning, my brothers and sisters. So today is Sunday, um, October 8th of the year 2023. And I'm pretty sure that most of you are keeping yourself um, up to date on what's happening in Israel. Um, right now it's uh, nine o'clock in the morning and I just finished watching uh, the most updated report. And so far they're saying that over 600 people have been confirmed dead and there's still th uh, thousands of uh, people still injured. and. Um, the war between Israel and I don't want to just say Hamas because I really believe that it's between Israel and Iran and its proxies. Um, we read about how Hamas continues to attack and but also we have to be careful because uh, Hezbollah supposedly is trying to uh, make some noise in the northern border of Israel and I read uh, last night and I heard a report that um that um uh, <clears throat> Um, from Afghanistan, the Taliban uh, are asking the other nations, Jordan and so forth, permission to go through their country so that they can join in this fight. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's getting crazy. We need to continue to pray for uh, for Israel and for God's uh, protection over them and for God to, to strengthen them and strengthen their leaders and give them wisdom and guidance and, and the courage to, to withstand the attack of the enemy. So um, I want to share something with you guys first, um, some, a couple of verses from Psalm 83. Um, I know that there are many people out there in the Bible prophecy community who uh, you know, say this is one of the battles that's going to happen. And listen, I, I don't know, and I'm not going to get into that, because as you read this psalm, and you think of the history of the Israelites, okay? There's been, there's been many times where these events of what Psalm 83 describes has happened. So this could just be another event that, you know, is similar to what we read in Psalm uh, 83. Because we know there's been many times where Israel's enemies have, con uh, have uh, consulted together and gone against Israel. So anyway, but I'm going to read a couple of verses um, and then I'm going to just give you my opinion on, on what's going on. So in Psalm 83 verse 1, it says, Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make atonement and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. That ends in verse 5. I'm going to skip verse 6 through 11. Uh, that just, in verse uh, 6 through 11, just describes who these people are. That's why I say some of this is events that already happened um, between Israel and her enemies. So I'm going to continue in verse 12 where it describes who they are. And it's, well, when it says, who, who say, okay, they said, let us take for ourselves the pastors of God for a possession. Oh my God, make them like the whirlwind dust like the shaft bef before the wind as the fire burns the woods and for the flame sets the mountains on fire so pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with your storm fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name O lord let them be confounded and dismayed forever yes let them put be put to shame and perish that they may know that you whose name alone is the lord are the most high over all the earth. So as I'm reading this and I see in verse 3, it says, they have taken crafty counsel against your people. Who are they? Okay, in this psalm, it's speaking about the people back in the old days and talking about Edomites and Ishmaelites and the Moabites and all those. But in today's day, who are they? In my opinion, it's the United Nations because you've seen how the United Nations, they put so many resolutions all the time condemning Israel. They're the only, Israel, the only nation in the United Nations that the council is always condemning, okay? They're the ones that are always condemning Israel. That's one of they. The other they is um, the Western countries. No matter how much, how many of these countries have come out yesterday and condemned these attacks, the United States, Canada, France, guys, that's all 
that's all speak. That's all. That's all. Nothing but words. Okay, to say, oh yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm with Israel. I stand with Israel. But what are they doing behind closed doors? Okay, because it says here. It says, for they have consulted together with one consent. And they form a confederacy against you, okay? We know that Iran or says they said they have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. That's Iran. Iran has publicly gone on record saying that they will not stop until Israel ceases from being a nation. Okay, that they will destroy them. So in, in my eyes and in the eyes of God is anyone who supports those who are enemies of Israel in God's eyes are also God's enemies, okay? We see how... Uh, I believe it was last month or the month before how the United States freed up six billion dollars to Iran. Okay, and Iran said, "Oh, it's, the United States said it's only going to be used for um, for aid. Okay, humanitarian aid." When have you known Iran to use anything for humanitarian aid? Okay, we know we we know and we hear how our brothers and sisters in Christ are being tortured in Iran. Okay, how they have to hide in secret in basements and caves to be able to read the Word of God. How they're being persecuted. Okay, Iranians don't care about that. Their all sole goal, their only goal is to destroy Israel. Okay, and the United States has freed up this money, and this money, in one way or another. It's going to be used if it's not already being used to fight against Israel. And the other way is I, um, Afghanistan, we see, we see how the Taliban now wants to join into this fight. Well, the Taliban has, I believe it's, it's reported that it's over $80 billion worth of United States um, military equipment that this beautiful administration of ours left behind. When they, you know, the, that debacle of, you know, withdrawing from Afghanistan, they left all that equipment behind. Well, that equipment is and probably is already or will be used against Israel. So my eyes, they're all guilty. Every single one of them. That's why I don't trust any of these nations. I don't trust our media, the Western media. I trust the Western media as far as I can throw them. Okay. I don't trust them. It's even to the point where I don't trust even to a certain extent the, the um, Israeli media. Because I follow a lot of I-24 news. That's mostly where I try to get most of my news from. And then obviously we follow, we go uh, with Amir Safardi and, and other, you know, beautiful brothers and sisters who are in, in Israel itself. You know, uh, Jewish um Jewish Christians. So we follow them and we try to get as much as we could from them. We want truth and that's the only way we're going to get some truth is by following people who are obedient to God, people who are devoted to God. It's the only way we're going to get truth. Um, and even in I-24 News, I've, I've listened to some commentators and I'm like, what are these guys talking about? They're making it also political. Okay, they're make, make it just like the United States. They make everything about politics. Meanwhile, people are getting slaughtered people are being attacked women and children okay on both sides on both sides because you know there are innocent people also in the palestine in gaza there's palestinians who are beautiful people innocent people who are just trying to live their life whether they don't believe they don't believe in the god we believe in they don't believe in jesus it, it doesn't matter they're still human beings in god's eyes and god loves us all and they're innocent they have nothing to do with this but it's it's the evil powers that are in charge that are doing all this. So, um, you know, just be very careful who you listen to, what you listen to, what media source you listen to. But remember one thing, the most important thing of all, we know who wins in the end of this whole thing. Okay, we know who wins. We know that we as Christians win. We know that Israel as God's people okay the apple of god's eye we know that ultimately in the end they will win but we need to pray guys we need to pray for israel and ask the lord to give them strength ask the lord to give their leadership wisdom and understanding on how to proceed and let's pray for the people who are taken hostage that we they will be returned you know harm you know i'm not harmed that they'll be safe and sound so anyway i pray that you continue to 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 just seek the lord and pray for, um, for you know, the deliverance of Israel, um, deliverance of those who are lost and don't know Jesus Christ. You know, just as it says here in the first verse of Psalm 83, do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. So pray, pray as I pray. Lord, it's time for you to move. It's time for you to reveal yourself in a mighty way. It's time for you to stand up 
for your people as you've always done in the past. It's time for you to uphold the covenants that you have made with Israel, which, are, you know, his covenants are yes and amen. The covenant that he made with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And we know, we know in the end that the Lord is faithful and just to his word. We know that his character is cannot lie we know that he can't lie but we just need to ask him to teach us how to be patient and to just wait on him as we read so beautifully throughout many of the psalms wait on the lord god bless you my friends and i pray that you have a nice sunday